Grüß Gott, Leute. Ich bin Christopher Johnson aus Therion uh, und ihr seid auf Stormbringer. Stay Metal. You are here on the uh, Rock Opera Unveiled Tour. Uh, what's the special thing about this tour? Can you tell us a bit? Because I, I think this, this tour wasn't in existence a year a year ago. Yeah, well, we started to work on, on the Rock Opera and we just realized we needed some feedback. So the idea came up to make a short tour, just like two weeks, and just play a few selected places and perform some pieces from the opera and yeah, get some reactions. I just don't like the idea of spending two or three years of my life composing something that doesn't work. Normally we just do whatever we, we like, we record it and put up an album and people like it, good. If people don't like it, well, too bad. But uh, this rock opera is going to have to have a lot of um, people coming to see us to make it work financially that are um, um, not the regular fans. You know? We, we need to put it up at, at the city and maybe do a couple of shows in a row because when you move these productions, that's where you have the cost, you know, to set it up and, and to transport it and you know bring it down again and all that. Um, so basically, we need your your parents to buy tickets as well. So I bring the whole family. Yeah, well, the, the people who normally would go and see Jesus Christ Superstar or Cats or something like that, we need to make it not commercial but accessible also to these people. There, there are some really metal parts too, but it's like with a horror movie, you know, there will be some music that the people who like horror movies never would listen to, that's like scary music. So of course there will be parts that they would say, oh, that's not what I would listen to at home, but with suits in the context on stage. Mm. Uh, we, we just like to try different directions where we go musically in the, in the opera and see if they're good for what they are. Like we, we perform one piece which is purely classical, so you can get some feedback on that. Uh, one typical piece with not so much guitar, which is more choir and orchestra, and just drums and bass in it, and guitar some small places, and some very typically guitar-based ones as well, some spooky ones, some more commercial ones, or well, more accessible, whatever you want to call it, more ear-friendly ones. Mm -hmm. And we just like to see if we're going in the right direction. And um, yeah, get some feedback to see if, if people would say, no, no, this is not good at all. Because people have very high expectations. And if they would say, oh, sorry, that's it, this is the big thing, then maybe we, we need to reschedule things and take more time and try different directions and so on. So you did, so did few, four shows, I think, yeah. up, up to now. Um, was there any complaints? Not really any justified. Somebody uh, said, oh, it's too little vocals, but, you know, the overture, for instance, which is the only place where there isn't vocals, it's not supposed to have any vocals. Mm -hmm. It's like saying there's no vocals in the instrumental. <laughs> it's an overture. But uh, on the other hand, you uh, get, get to keep in mind that a lot of people, they are not familiar with this opera terminology, so they, he wouldn't know that. <laughs> but you, uh, you told me it's for different audience as well so you uh, are you booking theaters then like or venues like this like small venues or do you need a bigger stage for orchestras and choirs or something like that well, my idea would be to to play at small theaters like five six seven hundred capacity theaters with seats they have good acoustics and they have all the uh, facilities for mm -hmm. changing sceneries and stuff um, orchestra yeah if some guy come with a checkbook and say you know I'd, I'd like to pay for this mm -hmm. Um, but we have to be prepared that this may not happen. So, and anyway, when you have opera, people don't look at the orchestra. It's not like when you see a symphony being performed, you look at the players. Uh, so for me, it's not a, such a big deal if if that would be on backing tracks. The important thing that you have the real, you know, singers. Mm -hmm. There will be many singers on stage. You will have a yeah, choir and uh, many soloists. Um, and all the sceneries, because you're there for to see, uh, you, you're there to see a play. It's like a, 
Um, it's a real theater. Yeah, then. It's, it's theater with music. So, so what they do on stage is the main thing. You hear the music and you see the, what's happening on stage. If you see somebody sitting and playing the violin or not, I don't think that's the main thing, really. So uh, it, this will be the band as it is now, plus Six. how many people? Uh, we haven't really finished that. We've made the storyline and we made chapters. Now we're going to write the scenes and then we will see exactly how many characters we need. We have the main characters. Um, we're going to invent a few more characters um, to, because there's not much female characters in the original story. Very male oriented, so we need to get more females in there. So we get all the male audience in? Um, just for the, the balance, I mean, who wants to hear only tenors and baritones sing for two hours? I mean, musically speaking, you need it. Visually, you need it. And so if guys need something to wank off to, that's my least of my concerns, to be honest. Um, it's for... I don't know any opera with only men in it, you know. It's always a balance between it. The theory on all this had women in it. Yeah, and, and uh, musically, I think people prefer sopranos before tenors anyway. I mean, at least metal fans do. I mean, there's not many metal bands with the lead tenor only, but mm. you have plenty with a soprano. Right. It sounds like a very big undertaking. Yeah, th and then choreography and those things. It's it's not that easy that you have a storyline and then you just go up on stage and oh, now I'm singing and acting. You need to be very specific how people are going to stand, where exactly and what they do, how they do things, otherwise you will look very amateurish. Mm -hmm. So we're going to probably work together with a professional choreograph. And you know, We have ideas, but we need somebody who did this for a living. We, we realized when I started to make the chapters, because the feedback from the band was quite soft, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not so enthusiastic. Uh, they're enthusiastic, but they feel like it's outside of their field, so it all ends up in my lap, you know. Um, so for the chapters, I started to work with an author, which is a, a good friend of mine who writes fictional books, and uh, he speeded up the process a lot. So he do a lot of the boring work, and then I just, you know, eat the cherries from the cake, you know, just say, no, no, they didn't change this and that, and so. Um, and with the scenes, I think the band will be more involved because that's where they will be specifically. Um, musically, everybody contributes, so that, that that's good. Um, how can you put it? it? It becomes a little bit inbreed of ideas mm -hmm. sometimes. Metal fans think in a certain way, and the metal bands think in a certain way, and everybody's happy with that. But once you're going to get out of that world, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a great example. Another set of ears. A, a good example of how it works in a metal scene. Black T-shirts would, would print in the same way since the 80s. I mean, if you're going to make a T-shirt, you put your album cover on it, uh, you put one with the tour dates in the back, whatever it is on the front of the tour back, and some skull or a monster. It always sells. You try to do like batik, different colors, few people will buy them. Metal fans are very conservative, so black fabric would print with skull or, or monster or, or something like that. Yeah, These are people, even if you say, oh, but we're a gothic band, it's different. No, people will be, oh, we can I have the one with the monster, please? I, I even worked in the merchandising on the last tour, you know, to get a clue of that. I'm a better yeah. boss if I know the work, and it's always the same. Yeah. And uh, this it's the same thing also when you would stage something. The, the metal fans would want a very specific thing. They're very band-oriented. They they want to see us play the guitar, and that's mm. important for them. But yeah, your mom, my mom, whatever, they, they would be into the, the, the acting and all that. They don't care so much about that. Um, and other things that we may not think about, because yeah, we're very band-oriented. We perform our songs, and you know, people want to headbang and <laughs> see somehow. Now, all of a sudden, we get into a completely different scene. Um, more mainstream scene, and, and we need to play by those rules, otherwise they're going to think we're awful and they're not going to show up. And if they don't show up, then we won't have money to, to carry on with this project. So we need to be very humble and very open-minded and really listen a lot to these opinions from, from professionals who, who do that for a living with musicals and stuff. But in the rock opera business, you're not the first one to go there, yeah. so there's very much of uh, business there, yeah, which has been like uh, since The Who, or Deep Purple, or... Uh well, the difference is we will do the first real rock opera, because rock, what is called rock operas up to now has been more like rock musicals. Right. They sing with mm. rock voices. We will have opera voices, so it will be a true blend between uh, rock music and um, opera. We may, ha we may have a little bit of rock vocals, but mm. everybody who sings should be capable of doing uh, opera singing, like Thomas Wickstrom. He can sing both. Mm -hmm. um, 
And what we have as an advantage is that when we approach somebody now with this idea, we, can, we have a sort of a guarantee. It's not that we can come with a good score. We can say, look, we have a very solid fan base, so we can assure you that we will sell out one show. And the rest you need to go to your traditional clients or traditional consumer, or whatever you want to call it. I think they don't refer to fans there because it's just average people. If somebody go and see Cats or Jesus Christ Superstars, like, should we go to the movie or should we go and see that? They don't have the record at home or anything. They don't care about musicians playing there. It's just like going to the cinema. You know? um, so, yeah, let's call them consumers. <laughs> um, they would work against that group for the majority of it, but we have a certain guarantee. We can guarantee that the, the, the first day will be more or less sold out only with our mm -hmm. fans. Um, and that gives us an, an extra push to this, an extra argument why this should open up the checkbooks. To get away for a short time f uh, from the opera stuff, uh, you got a CD out, I think it's almost a year old now. Um, which is uh, thoroughly filled with uh, cover versions of French, old French chansons, what's it well, called? Or oh, songs, songs. Let, let's call them songs. There's one chanson on it, and then there's old schlagers and pop songs. Yeah, but old stuff from France. And is this some secret uh, hobby of you to collect odd songs from France or something and then make covers of it? Or how do you hit upon this idea? I just wanted to do something very different celebrating the 25 year anniversary of the band and I mean you had suggestions from the record label uh, how about a compilation album uh, how about not <laughs> it's very boring <laughs> yeah. uh, we never made a compilation album ever and I, the way I see it we should never do it it's very boring um, I would like to do something which is a challenge and I would like to do something which is new and something that still puts you on the map thing is, to be honest, um, time is not really on our side at the moment because trends come and go and right now the, the trend that we've been a part of and that we've been created mostly, mm -hmm. uh, Fairy in the Night, which, um, this trend is on its way out. So it's like being a heavy metal band. First it's the 80s and everybody loves you and then it becomes the 90s and then pe people will be like, oh, they're still around, they, they still play heavy metal. Um, like grunge or something? Yeah, it would be stupid to think that it would be different with this trend. I'm just surprised that this symphonic metal trend lasted so much longer than regular. It's been 15 years yeah, instead of the regular 10 years or 8 or whatever it is, or 6 for the grunge. Mm. Thanks, well, God. What's grunge? It's crap. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always, things go in cycles, so probably in 10 years from now we're going to get double paid, you know, playing at festivals for old bald people that want to be young again <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like, like Maiden, they, they, they're bigger now than they were in the 80s. They yeah. sell out stadiums, yeah. they wouldn't be booked at all in, uh, in the 80s. Um, so it's good to do something that makes people talk about you, because if people don't talk about you, then you're dead, you know. Um, and challenge people. And I collected experiences during my career on how things work, the mechanism behind marketing, mechanism in people's mind and how things work. And I realized there's a lot of resources that nobody used really. I mean, Rammstein has been the master of a similar thing to make people talk about them. Um, everybody needs to hear that band that put fire on to themselves on stage, you know, like originally when they were launched. And what? They have a singer that sings like Hitler. Uh, metal with the Hitler vocals. Well, I have to hear this. And especially in the USA, that works really well. You know, they like extreme stuff. In England. Yeah, but who, who would have imagined that um, Rammstein would sell platinum in France? Sort of mm -hmm. That would be very uh, yeah. unexpected. But, but it works be because of these things. And take somebody like Marilyn Manson. Let's be honest now. I have nothing against him. But if he was from Poland and he was fat and with a lot of pimples, do you think he would have a record deal? Uh, I guess not. No, it, it's not because these songs are so fucking amazing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're cool songs, but it's nothing special. He became really big because he's really good in provoking in the right way. Um, the marketing machine behind yeah, it. Very good, very smart guy, definitely. So it's a way of, by doing this whole French thing, like old girly French pop songs, everybody who hear about this is 
what the fuck? Yeah, and, and especially when, when they hear negative comments like, this is so crazy, the band is over, this is the worst thing ever, and the sky is falling upon our heads, you know. Then you immediately get everybody who's on the internet to get interested in this and buy the record. Yeah, For me, so it means you can do whatever you want I didn't spend, in the band. So. I didn't spend one euro on promotion. And the video clips we did, they costed like 1,000 euro each. Mm -hmm. We spent 3,000 euro in total to make these three first video clips. Mm -hmm. That's nothing. That's yeah. less than you would spend on one. And it worked great. I mean, the sales has been, well, comparable to Citroën. In some countries less, some countries a bit more. It's somehow comparable. Mm. Even though Nuclear Blast put shitloads of money into it, and I didn't, well, f you can consider the, the video clips as promotion. So let's say I spent 3,000 then. But if you would have done it on Nuclear Blast, of course, we would have made a video clip as well for more than 3,000. I always had a lot of inspiration from different type of music. I mean, I listen to this type of music, mm. among other things. That's why I know the songs. Um, and I could have changed them really, really a lot, but I didn't want to change them more than absolutely necessary so I could say, okay, now we can call it Therion. So I just wanted to translate the song into a language that our fans would understand. And it's been divided. A lot of people hate the record and some, they just don't like it. And a lot of people really love it. And the interesting thing that there's at least tens of thousands of people in Europe now who would never ever in the wildest dream consider to listen to any of these songs. Mm -hmm. Both people in France who, who know the songs who think, oh, it's ridiculous, it's my mom's record collection, you know. <laughs> um, and other people who would just say, French songs, I hate French, what the fuck is that? Uh, that are now listening and really enjoying these songs. And you can see comments on YouTube to the original songs like, well, Ferrian brought me here, kind of. Um, and I just want to prove that, that music is not so different that you think. You should maybe show more respect to other music forms. And metalheads can be a very conservative and think, oh, everything that's not metal is shit. And it's okay, you listen to what you want. On the other hand, metalheads are very unconservative as well because they listen to lots of, lots of things. Like, like you, like, like you listen to, to French music. They listen to like folklore or classic, something like that. Yeah, but it needs to be somehow approved and be cool, that's the thing. I mean, some folk music is considered cool since there were folk metal bands. And classical music earned respect, um, I think, with the, the prog bands in the 70s yeah. and, and neoclassical inspired guitar plays in the 80s. That's kind of approved. But then there are things that are not approved. It's not cool to listen to ABBA, for instance. Oh, it's, it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, maybe things are changing slowly now, but for most of the time when I've been into the metal scene, it's very important that things are approved. I'll give you a good example. Europe is not cool. Final Countdown is not cool. When I grew up, if you wanted to listen to Final Countdown, you better do it secretly because people are like, fuck, you listen to Europe, gay band. Um, take a band like Sabaton. It's brilliant. They basically do melodic hard rock. If they would sing about love, people would say, oh, it's some fucking AUR shit band. But because they have like or brutal vocals, they sing about war and you know the record covers, then you have the stamp. Approved. Okay. This is yeah, cool. Yeah. So they make music that your your mom could listen to, but they rough it up a little bit yeah. and, and then sell it well. Yeah, so it's it's super singable and I, I think it's genius. I mean a lot of other musicians I've speak to they say, Oh but you know it's crap and they complain about Hammerfall and a lot of bands. I think it's really cool. So we are right overdue, I think. <laughs> We're talking for half an hour now. Uh, yeah, well, um, I hope uh, the whole thing will work out. I hope the people will like the new songs you present t tonight. I think I have five, five songs, four or five songs. The overture and four excerpts from. Mm. It's not really songs because it's more like a, a, a part that has been ripped out, like a piece teaser. Of yeah, a song would have a beginning and an end. These are, are pieces of music that. It's more like a flow, you know. Yeah. I'm sure there will be some breaks in the opera. There will be um, two acts with a pause in between, I, I assume. Uh, most of the time it will be just like a long song. So it's like if you would rip a part of, of it out. We can get a picture of it yeah. tonight, and I hope you will get a picture of the audience <laughs> reactions. What we're performing are scenes, you can say. It's, it's um, the music to certain scenes. Mm -hmm. You have the dying scene, you have the accusation scene, you have a scene where they start becoming a bit suspicious and they start to question, like, who are you really? Mm -hmm. uh, 
because Antichrist he he do a lot of really good things. There's no there are no wars, nobody's starving, and everything is really good. Um, but there's still some people that are suspicious, like who is really your God? We're looking out for that. We're looking out for that. And uh, yeah, thanks for the nice talk, the long talk, in fact. <laughs> well, it's, it's a big. Uh, this is a topic we could talk about for hours because it's such a big project. But I have to cut it together. <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs>